Hi, Dr. Nurse Podcast. Thanks for listening, people. We have got the wonderful Dr. John McRae. McRae, you got it. McRae. He is a doctorally prepared nurse practitioner. You're a family nurse practitioner. You also have your master's in public health. I like to hit on anything you've got because it is important. You spent time investing (laughs) your energy and your money and just your mental space. So you need credit for it. So let's start kind of with your history. And I'd like to just kind of take it from the top and just let our listeners know where you're from and then kind of your expertise. And then we can get into your journey. But you grew up in Idaho. And after high school, you went to the University of Idaho with the thought of becoming a dentist. After applying to dental school a couple times, trying to kind of see if you can get in, it just wasn't happening. After trying one last time in 2007 to get into dental school, you went and got your bachelor's in nursing and then you fell in love with patient care. And then in 2011, you finished your degree, you started as a bedside nurse. After trying to climb the corporate ladder, realizing this is not going to be a way that I can create create change. You decided to become a nurse practitioner, which then you realized you also can't create a whole lot of change (laughs) there working for the system. So then after that program was finished in, in 2016, you started your own business in January of 2017. That did not take you very long to figure it out. And you got started in aesthetics and you found a passion for that. And then it looks like during the pandemic time, you started learning how to create courses to teach other healthcare professionals to do aesthetics and other procedures that you know very well because of your business, how to do. And so you're married for almost 20 years. Wow, how yeah. sweet. And you've got some babies and you have a cat and a dog and a hedgehog. I went back to school, got my nursing, my uh, baccalaureate in, in nursing. And I loved it. I love patient care. I love the science behind it. I'm like, oh, screw dental school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become a nurse. So I got um, hired by a hospital. In, right out of school in 2011. Yeah. And I said, hmm, I'm going to climb this corporate ladder. I hired within. I have tons of opportunities. And I dove into that bureaucracy and I got very jaded very quickly because all it was was talk. Like you go to all these meetings and they just talk, 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 talk. And it was all about the money and how could they be more fiscally responsible. And what ended up happening from all these meetings is nurses took it. You know, they took the, you know, you make a change and it was usually for the detriment of the nurses, you know, more patients, more work, less resources. So I'm in Idaho and Idaho is a very rural state. And we probably of all the states have the most liberal rules to our practice. They want, they want you to do anything you can, you think that you're, that you can, that you can get trained to do. So I do a lot of stuff that in other states you're not going to be able to do. I work completely independent. So yes, I'm in the dental world, but I'm a completely independent provider. I can prescribe any kind of medication. I can, well, with a few exceptions, but I have a full scope of practice authority here in Idaho. And the reason why Idaho does that is they want you to be in a rural setting and they want you to- Access to care. Access to care. Then COVID hit and I shut my practice down for six weeks, like most of America shut down. And when you are self-employed and you require to be working to make money and you take six weeks off, it it almost bankrupted me. Like it was not, it was not a good situation. So I thought, okay, this is going to happen again. What can I do to help, you know, the revenue stream? And so I started the Dr. John courses in, in we, over the summer of 2020, we filmed some, you know, some e-courses and then we developed our curriculum and whatnot. And I go, and I told my media, my multi- uh, or my my marketing team. Hey, let's build this, and let's focus on nurses. So we built a funnel on Instagram, and we focused on nurses. And we've done a lot of engagement with nurses, you know, podcasts like these and whatnot. Most of what I practice, I did not learn in school. Like mm, it's the foundation, yeah. like how to treat a patient. Yeah, you learn that yeah. in school, like how to talk to patients and whatnot. But as far as the actual science that I'm doing. I didn't learn that in school. I think that's important for anybody that's going to school. You're not going to come out knowing everything. You're going to come out knowing enough to be safe. And then you got to go, you got to go learn. I think one important thing to to make note of as well is as nurses, nurse practitioners realize that hospitals and, and taking a job thinking that, oh, they're going to give me opportunities for growth. I have found the opposite. I have not found that I've had a lot of opportunities for growth while working under a system. It's where I've stepped out of the system and taught myself 
whatever it is. No one taught me how to do a podcast. Nobody taught me how to do other aspects of procedures or whatever, but I've sought that out on my own. And that's really where that investing in yourself really does lead to growth because waiting and thinking, oh, my job's going to give me some CMEs. I actually get denied when I've asked my job, hey, I'd like to go and do this conference. Can I use that money that's allotted to me as a benefit? They're like, no, you have to ask for permission where it's like, no, if I just invest in myself and I just go learn it, no one's going to tell me no. I just had this flashback of when I was a bedside nurse. I had this patient who was a pharmaceutical rep and I was walking him in the hallway and he was a head honcho in this pharmaceutical company. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I only hire nurses to be my my reps. And I go, oh, yeah, why is that? He goes, because they know how to sell. And I said, oh, not me. I hate selling. Like, that's not for me. And he goes, oh, that's funny. He goes, you've made me do 10 things today I didn't want to do. <laughs> and, and I, right now and I, I don't want to walk. <laughs> And I kind of, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly what he said. And I kind of stopped and that took pause. I'm like, holy smokes, I do sell. Like I sell people at their worst. Like these yeah. people are sick and I'm making them do things they don't want to do. Just think about what it'd be like if you're helping somebody do something they want to do and how successful you'd be at that. 